Hello and welcome back. I wish everybody all the best for the upcoming 2021. And I want to say thank you for the thousand subscribers. I finally made it after two and a half years. Just think about it before you start your own channel. But we have a lot to cover. So let's get let's get cracking and let's move forward. If you are new to Rhino, please go back within this playlist and start from scratch because there are a lot of things I already covered which you might need to know before you start. And now we jump into circles. So let's go. You get this uh, circles tool panel here. Again, you know the routine already actually. If I click, click or write the command, so let's write the command. I normally, when, I, when I'm in the work process, I write most of my commands because it's just faster than looking for it in, any, in, in a toolbar. But for the sake of learning it, we can, of course, choose it from here. And the reason is also to use, use the command line is that you can not just access the command, but you can also access all the subcommands. That means if you use circle as a command, it gives you the different types of how to draw the circle within this command line. And they are representative. They are also represented here in this uh, toolbar. So keep that in mind. There's actually more commands than, and, than tools in toolbars. And we get to that also in, in future videos. Okay, I draw my first circle. This is basically just choosing a center. Uh, I just uh, have to triangle here, don't worry about it. I just take it as a, as a tool to snap on. So I snap here, for example, and then I draw my radius. And the radius, I can either type the radius. I also see the radius where I am here on the low, on, on, on the lower end. I see the, the current the radio increases and how it gets smaller. And if I want to, for example, snap to here to the middle of the line, I can just snap here. That's it. That's that's my lecture for today. Nah, joke. Um, view, you can set the view and go to perspective. Um, because I want to show you how you can draw a vertical, a vertical circle. Let's choose another. Okay, let, let, this may be more comfortable. It's, it's better to understand. <coughs> circle again. Either you type it or you choose it from here. And then now you can use vertical, for example, a vertical circle. That's useful if you don't want to change your construction plane. Construction planes are, are here. If your construction plane looks kind of different oriented at the moment, then just press this one. This is the, this is the set C plane to world top. That will reset um, <coughs> your, your C plane, your construction plane to the origin in top view. But now you always draw in the construction plane. So that means um, if you don't want to switch the construction plane just to draw a vertical line, you could do that by, of course, drawing a vertical line first and then and then draw a circle that works that draws me a vertical circle but even better is just click here press vertical enter and this draws me a vertical a vertical circle in any direction i want so this is very useful Another thing to know, very important, um, choosing the type of circle. There are two types of circles. One is a circle. And if now if I click here, if I select it and um, basically make the control points visible, you see that you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight control points and one center point. Now I do the same again. If if you don't see the control points, just go here on that um, symbol here and show if you left click show the control points, then you also see that. Now if I choose the same uh, command circle, but then I type D for deformable. 
I can set my degrees. We talked about degrees before. So, and uh, you can choose how many control points you have. You can still choose if it's vertical, um, if it's going through two points or three points. We will look at that in a moment. Tangents. So you can still choose all these options here, but it's a different circle. They they look similar. They look completely the same. But if you look at the control points, they're different. So this this uh, circle is made out of arcs, and this is a deformable deform. Of course, you can deform this one as well. But deformable means that it's made of out of control points. So that means that these the curve stays static. And um, if I change this here, you actually create a kink. I think that's new um, in, in Rhino 7, or maybe it was also in 6, but I haven't noticed that in Rhino 5. So if you have Rhino 5, you might not have that option. Again, I choose circle. Now I can choose other things here. Through two points means that it's actually this subset here. Circle diameter. That draws me two points is P. I need to press P. So, okay, two points means that draws me this. So that is the same as this one. Yeah. You can also draw a circle defined by the diameter rather than rather than by the radius. So if I click here, again, I can choose the center point, and then I can choose if it's a diameter or if I draw it if I draw the radius or the diameter. And I can just type here D for diameter and then type 1000 for example. Next, again, I can either click this button here or go again through this, the normal circle. So I type circle and then I choose three points and by pressing O. That means now I draw a circle through three points. One, two, three. Let's continue. Around, draw a circle around, circle around curve. That's, here is A. So I click A. And now I ask me to select the curve. I can select the circle. And then I choose a point on that circle, which is also a curve, by the way. And we talked about this. So if you actually look into the type, in the object type, it's this closed curve. So I choose, again, I choose a circle around curve. I select the curve and I select the point. And then it asks me for a diameter or a radius. And actually, if you see, there's more circumference. So you can... Um, draw a, uh, a circle by uh, defining the circumference, the area. Anyway, there's a lot of options. So there are these endless options. Now, if I do this here and I define it by 200, now it's just a line. Of course, it's not a line, it's a circle. Looks quite cool. At some point, I will show you how to get this nice look in in Blend uh, in Rhino. Okay, I'll just make a quick screenshot here. Yeah, my computer just uh, no, my computer Rhino just crashed. Um, I think I have a quite an old graphic card. Yeah, it's now almost ten years old. I think still works, but slowly I can feel. It's time. Anyway, we just continue. Next in line here, circle, tangent, and tangent. I use this quite often because it's super useful. You want to have a circle which touches two lines, but still has a certain radius. Touch, touch whatever, or choose the line you want to want the circle to touch. And then another one and then you choose the radius 
Oh, I can choose a thousand. Actually, it doesn't fit here. Let's try it again. Let's type 400. Yeah, that's quite straightforward. Tangent, free t uh, a curve for free tangents. That's also super useful, uh, especially with the triangle here. Um, yeah. You can also get there like this. So you, you click circle and then you say T for tangent. It's the same. Or, or let's, let's do it here. T. And boom. Now let's let's um, go back to three D view um, and yeah, so I can choose here vertical to C plane. Can choose my orientation. I have auto orthographic mode on. I can turn this off if I want, and I can. Draw, draw a circle in any in any direction or if I want I can then also choose and snap to points maybe I want to snap to the middle point here and middle point and you can see I always just I always just right click to use the command again and now I could choose I could choose this and it's yeah, it's an interesting shape Yeah, but you see, you can actually do quite interesting stuff. I was just playing around a bit and yeah, got to this shape just by drawing some circles, trimming some stuff and um, put it back together. Then there is another one, fit, fit circle to points. This is a similar thing as we had here where you fit a line for points. I really haven't tried that. Um, let's do it. Top. Let's place place some points here. Multiple points. Dun, 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 dun. I guess it has to be some kind of circle shape. And now I'm choosing these. Yeah. Not so bad. I wonder, I wonder if if I have just I don't know. What I have just this. Okay, interesting. Let's do this. Hmm, it's a bit unpredictable to be honest. But yeah, why not? It's it's um, maybe somebody find a use for it. Maybe I will find a use for it at some point, but I don't know yet. Okay, let's quickly do grasshopper version of circles. Again, in the geometry containers, you can actually go here and choose circle, circle. Put the circle here. Then you can make a circle available, an existing circle available. Or I think you actually need to draw a circle. Let's see. Yes, it asked me actually to draw a circle. So in in Grasshopper, if you want to have a circle as a start point, as a start geometry, then um, 
it asks you to set a circle and it actually asks you the same things as we just discussed. Circle for center, vertical, two points, three points, tangent, around a curve, fit for points. Let's just try a no uh, draw a normal circle. Now this circle is made available here. Um, you can also make a circle available by just choosing it. If if you choose it as a curve, draw a circle, and then you can set one circle, set one curve. Then this circle is available as a curve inside Grasshopper. You might need to choose different methods to work with it later on, depending on what you want to do. So that's one thing. You can also construct circles and you can see that there are, there's, there are these different tools. Uh, circle. circle tool is basically the same what we did in Rhino. We define a center point and a radius and here we could, what we did before, uh, construct a point. Let's do that. Here in Vector, we can actually construct a point by defining the coordinates. And we can do that by choosing sliders. Let's create a slider here. Copy, copy. Let's move this away. So this is now my point. And now I have a point here. And the default radius is one. So I can get another slider. Just copy this one here and place it in here. And I can draw my circle and I can just still move my circle around. You can also uh, just have here a point container and you have multiple points here. And select them all. Only points. Put them in here, make them available in Grasshopper, and put it here. And see that I have shown, <laughs> and uh, and you can see that it's chosen. Or it shows the, the 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 circles on each of these points. Then here you see you have. Uh, a circle for three points so that's also possible that I have this point here so I have one maybe maybe I choose copy this here so a point through a circle for three points one is here I need to select one point Let's select this one so this is my selected point and then I just place this one and just change here the, the coordinates and now I place this here and this here and drew me a circle through these points. One, two, three. Yeah, I can still move this around, by the way. The power of Grasshopper. Fit for points, we just saw that. Again, it's, it's very similar. Tangents, circle for tangents, tangents. So it's basically the same, just in a parametric way. Now I'll just show you just something quite cool, what you can also do here. Let's delete this, delete this. Um, let's 
have a bit more uh, more points. Now, just give you a, a quick candy. There's a component called it's called random, and it creates different numbers. I, I guess you, you you know what I'm getting to. So I can I can have these center points. There is no randomness to the center points. They can have okay. They have, can have random coordinates which they already have anyway. But what if we want to have random radius radi? So now they have all the same ready, but I can also choose a random method to create these ready. What does it need? If you look here, there's a range. The range means a range between two numbers. So that can be, for example, 0 to 1. It can be 0 to 100. It can be 1,000 to 5,000. It can also be minus 200 to plus 200 example that's also a range you can set the domain here the domain defines the range yeah so I can go here it says 0 to 1 let's go here and set the domain from minus a thousand to plus a thousand now you see my range is minus thousand to two thousand. And now I want to create random numbers out of this. Actually it does it already creates random numbers. So if I put a panel in here, it creates one random number. Out of the out of the minus thousand to plus thousand. Because here in a number of random values is one. Now we could change that, I could say 10. Then I get 10 different numbers. And I have a seed, another uh, slot here, which is called seed, where I can um, shuffle these and create different numbers. Let's go here. Yeah, um, Yeah. I could also restrict this to integers if I want. Yeah, then I can, it's just, in, so it's easier to read. I can restrict that to integers. And now if I put that in here, then you can see Actually, you can see it a bit. So some of these rings are smaller, but the problem is because I have more than 10 uh, points. So it, it, it basically the first 10 points, they create these different numbers. And by the way, I cannot have a minus radius. So I, I will set this back to something else. Let's, let's do zero to a thousand. And you can see something changed. Now I could, I could do this and just put in a bigger number, but it was not ideal because the last ring basically has all the other leftover kind of numbers stored in. So you see that there are 85, 86, sorry, 86 different values but they're not 86 points, but it need to use these all these values. So what we can do, we can actually measure the length of the list because this is a list of points. It has 44, so we could actually put 44, 44, then we're there. Or you can, this is actually easier because if you change the amount, you could, you could just, just say list length, this tool, actually measures the length of the list 
and 44. And this is useful if the number of points changes all the time. And put more points, select them, put them here, and yeah. It just updated the number of random num of random values. Yeah, then you can do other things with it. This one. Hoppala. That's not what I wanted. Just set a set unit for the direction. And another slider. And now you you guess what I want to do now. You can choose all these. And use another seed, another uh, random random number here. Uh, just generate different numbers and put this in here. And that will give me not just different sizes of rings, but also the height. But uh, yeah, I hope I hope you like this tutorial and uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you in the next one.